but like spending on cars it's like it's it's crazy how much it costs like just for like i bought i bought a front grill man it was 360 dollars just for this front grill for my car because it's 19 years old so like they don't make them new you have to buy yeah. them used on ebay <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside. We're having a bubble episode uh, this week. And joining me, uh, one of the VIP beer babes, we have uh, Brumel. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for speaking to us today about your Instagram, about the beer babes, about your love of craft beer. Uh, as we do on all episodes, we're going to share a virtual beer and let my audience know what you're drinking. I'm drinking right now the beer named Mise en Abyss. Oh, yeah, in, in, in Abim. It's yeah. from... It's a sweet style with lactose. Cool. I'm uh, along those lines. I have uh, from La Souche at a Quebec City, I believe. It's Sombre yeah, Dessert. So Sombre Dessert. It's a pastry stout with uh, chocolate edition amandine au chocolat. I believe that's almond. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And we do a virtual toast. So, so cheers. Toast. So sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. So as I said, thank you very much for uh, for joining us today. And uh, let's start uh, as I ask everyone, why beer Instagram? I guess like I really always loved beer. And I said like with the pandemic, that's when I like started brewing. And I said like, why not just like start a started like a beer blog out of it while starting brewing? So that's how like Brewmel was born. But actually. First, I did it with my best friend and my sister afterwards, but like both of them were not really, they didn't have the time. So I was just like, I took the phone to a troll and just made it like my only beer Instagram. So that's how it, kind of, it became brew milk because before it was two girls, one beer. Awesome. So you go from two girls, one beer to, to obviously predominantly yourself, brew milk. Uh, and I see like from your Instagram, you have a good combination of like just the beer photos. Some have a little story, which I like description of the beer which is very clear you you could tell like what you enjoy when you're drinking and then beer selfies as well what made you decide that combination and not just sticking with either just beer or just like selfies i guess like sometimes i'd like just drink beer just like to enjoy the beer and sometimes like you do a makeup you're feeling cute you take a little, a little selfie and you're like you post it but like it's mainly mostly beer there's like there's less selfies of me and more pictures of beer because like it's beer first for me and like i'm mostly in the background but like i enjoy like posting selfies too and like mainly they're the one that gets the most interactions well like the, the beer pictures do, do too but like my beer selfies do more well obviously because you know it's internet <laughs> yeah 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 no it's it's that's a you know i joke around that i'm the pretty face of our show uh when you know clearly i'm just your typical straight white bearded male who drink, who's a beer drinker Whereas uh, when I mentioned in, in, you know, our package is uh, you're part of the beer based family, which I think is great that uh, I'm a firm believer that we need more women in beer, more people of color, more people of, you know, not just straight white dudes like me. Do you find, I know it's slow, but do you find it is slowly becoming more accepting of, of having more women in beer and more people of color and, and other sexual orientations than just being straight? Well, yeah, obviously I said like, we're seeing over the years more and more progress, more and more women, pre like more diversity. And I think it's like, it's, it's in like everything. I'm sorry, my, my English is it. It's okay. It's okay. It's like in everything, like we're seeing more diversity everywhere in beer itself too. So that I think it's really cool that, yeah, we're seeing progress. Are you uh, glad that you were reached out to join the Beer Babes family? You sound very enthusiastic about it. I've seen it in your post too. So I'm just, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on, on that. Well, first of all, like Roxy is a friend. So that's what I feel really cool. And I feel really a part of that community. That's really cool. And like all the girls, we're all like a big group of support. And I think it's really cool to just have like this community. So yeah, I'm really enthusiastic of being with them and like being a VIP too. Very cool. That's awesome. I love hearing that kind of stuff. How did you discover craft beer? Um, I think like it was in summer of 2017. I will always remember. I used to really hate beer, like Bud and like Budweiser and like all that type of beer. I really hated beers. And, and then like my sister, she was like more into craft beer and she made, 
she made me taste some beer. So I was like, okay, like, it's okay. It's good. And then I started like dating a guy that, I, that was really into craft beer. And like, then we started like more enjoying craft beer. I remember the first one that I really drank was like Unibrew. Now those mixed cases, like you have like a, like a nice var- var- oh my God. variety, right? Yeah, variety. <laughs> But like the craft beer that really got me like hooked on craft beer was the milkshake IPA from the Buck Ale. I don't know why that like that beer like really like I was like damn that's a nice beer and I tried like more of them than more than more than more than that. I got into so many styles and like it like, kind of rolled from there. That's crazy. That's a wild thing to try like just oh I'm trying you know kind of Unibrew which are more Belgian inspired Quebecois old school beers and then all of a sudden you're like oh milkshake ipas woo! like all this flavor it lactose was like, it was so appealing like the can was like really a bright yellow and it was like a beer with like whipped cream on top and like it was really appealing then i like like and the, like the artwork it influences a lot of my beer purchase sometimes i like i don't buy them because i look at them and i'm like Ugh, a saison like hell no no saison <laughs> for me i don't like that style yeah. but like the beer would be really like good looking and so I'm like tempted to like buy them with the I like the label. So that's what kind of drew me through that that milkshake IPA. I, I mean I see the tattoos and stuff. So obviously you love the the creativity of artistry and from the sound of it when it comes to uh, I'm that way too where some weeks I'll be like, oh let's go all loggers. And then another week I'm like, ooh, fancy can art. And being, you know, <laughs> a, a, a an 80s kid, it's like, oh uh Mike Michael Brasserie Pixel uh their contract brewery I'm sure you've heard of them it's like yeah. oh and all these old school video game stuff so that's where I buy and yeah. that's it, it's very easy to like try everything uh as much as you can uh Quebec we have a great beer scene Ontario we have a good we have a good beats beer scene as well you're a little because uh, I believe you're north northwest of Quebec uh Montreal right yeah yeah, exactly. So you're like, I'm not that far from uh, get snow. That's like yeah. really close from Ontario. Like, it's like on the limit of mm-hmm. Ontario. So yes, yeah, so I've tried a lot of Ontario beers and yeah, like Ontario has a really nice beer scene. Like I'm planning, a, well, we'll get that to that later on the yeah. beer yeah, But yeah. Like, yeah, like uh, definitely Ontario, Toronto, or like uh, some of the beer scenes I really want to get into. No, I, and mentioning our, you know, there's Brasserie Gallicus in, uh, I, I believe they're Gatineau or Almer. Um, I can't. Yeah, the Al- Almer, yeah. Almer, exactly. yeah. So, like, the when you're speaking of art, and then I'm just seeing right there in, in my head, just Gallicus is very, oh, yeah, like it, yeah the, the crazy kind of gods they use and the art style. It's it's very, very interesting that, that you yeah, kind of but- pick art for your beer more than beer is your art, where beer is art and science put together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I really like Gallicus, all their aesthetic, like we can say, it's mm-hmm. like a Norse mythology, and I really, like, I really into, like, Norse mythology. So, yeah, like, when I saw their cans, they're, they're, all, they're always very interesting and appealing to me. Yeah, hopefully future uh, inter- interview for us, <laughs> and maybe we'll be able to meet up for a beer there one day, too, so that'd be great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So, so when it, what made you decide brew mel and not, you know, mel drinks beer or or some sort of combination of you drinking craft or, or your art? Like what, what made you decide brew mail over any other because possibility? Like, um, I already had like GDM mail. So I kind of like the format of that. So at first I like I like the name Hoppy Mail, but there was like so many accounts of, that started with that. And I was just like, oh, I would get like lost in the mass. So I was like, oh, another, uh, an alternative was like brew. So I was like brew mail. And I liked the, the sound of it. Like it had a nice ring to it. So I was like, there you go, sold. Awesome. Yeah, nice and simple. You know, you didn't have to complicate anything, which is good because you know some people. I'm sure they spend hours and hours and hours on end trying to decide no, exactly. what their user handle is going to be. Yeah, exactly. When you overthink it, like sometimes it just like, becomes something like crazy or like not crazy, but like something that it's not gonna you're not gonna hook on if it's like too long or too short or like uh, it has to have the like the nice uh, in the middle. Now uh, you do have two Instagrams. Obviously, you have your uh, your beer related one where it comes to brewing and stuff, and your personal one, which is uh, JDM underscore Mel. Yeah, exactly. Um, gotta get correct, and that's where I find like car focus, which is funny because like the dichotomy of like this one's about drinking and this one's about driving, but don't come <laughs> don't combine them. <laughs> so no, not, never. Actually, I'm very strict on that because like I drink and I also like smoke weed, and like mm-hmm. when I do both, I never drive. Never, never, never like. Even if I'm going out of a friend's house and she's like, oh, do you want to like a, 
eat supper and drink wine. I'm like, fine, but I'm sleeping at your house because I'm not taking my car afterwards. So I'm very, very strict on that. So I don't like, there's no like, um, how do I say, interference between yeah. the two. Mm-hmm. But it's because we'll see, like, Julian Mel was mostly born around in 2011. Like, I've been into cars like my whole life. Like, my grandpa was a mechanic, my dad is not a mechanic, but he can fix anything on a car he, he wants. And so I was like, always drawn to cars so like cars go way back and beer is like kind of recent well not recent but like in the last few years but like cars have been in my life for like over 20 years so it's like the nuance like before i didn't drink before 2017 i never drank like even at bars i used to like drink a little drinks but i would never drink beer and i would never get wasted and i would like drink like twice a year so it it really changed from the years (laughs) yeah no, uh, and that's what I find with craft beer. It's very difficult to, as you said, get wasted. But, you know, in my 20s, which is 20 years ago, uh, I was going to and drinking Blue and Budweiser and Coors Light all night long with friends. And, you know, but uh, I'm in, I'm close to downtown Montreal, so it's easy for me. It's not, I'm not, you know, kind of a little further away or more, you're more country-based than you are city-based than I, like yeah, downtown yeah. Montreal-based than I am. So uh, me going out and getting super drunk and getting home was not a problem. Nowadays, it's, it's not easy or cheap to get drunk on craft beer. I've, <laughs> I've unfortunately done it during this, like the first lockdown where it's like, Oh, let's drink some double IPAs. And I'm like, Whoa, like I'm drunk and I haven't been drunk in ages. So it's, it catches you off guard. But as you said, it's a perfect way for you to separate. Like I'm drinking tonight. No, I'm not driving. That's, that's it. Like, you know, be responsible when you drink uh, yeah. and do not ever drink and drive. It's, no, because it's Silly. really easy to plan like your evening. Like you know, you're going, you're going somewhere, or like you're doing something. Like, just bring an extra money for taxi or anything. It's like really easy to plan. Just plan ahead, and you'll mm-hmm. be you'll be fine. Yeah, there's unlimited options now. If you don't have public transportation, like you said, take a taxi. Uh, get a sober friend. Get the one like you know. I'll be sober this time going out. You're sober next time. I don't know, like the Disney driver, exactly. Yeah. So uh, there's there's no excuse to drink and drive anymore, and and especially oh. nowadays with so many more options than there used to be before. Awesome. Oh, exactly. So for the inspiration and styles of mostly your beer Instagram, uh, the way you take photos, the way you describe things, what what where was that inspiration? Where does that come from? Oh my god, that's kind of hard. Like the format of my text, it, like it has evolved around like over the the years because it's been almost two two years since like Rumea opened when. And I like to try to keep a certain format, but for the pictures, it's mostly like, uh, example, I'm sitting outside because I have like a really nice little porch area. I'll just take my beers and edit them. It's not really like, I don't like focus on a style or an aesthetic or anything. It's just like, I take a picture, I think it's nice, I edit it and I post it. But like my text format has like a certain structure now, like, and I'll stick to that structure because I like it. Like saying the style, then the ABV, the IBU, the brewery, Mm -hmm. then like, like side notes, like a, if it was a condition in like oak barrels or something like that. Then and I put up like my text and the beer text. Yeah. And you're clearly trying to promote the brewery in your photo as well, which is super important is like, here's why I'm drinking from these guys for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah. And, and, you know, try these guys. It's, and I, even with all the hashtags you include, you know, hashtag Quebec craft when you're drinking a beer from Ottawa, hashtag Ottawa beer, hashtag this. So, uh, you know, just to get that traction of, of how you're going about your, your photography and including those hashtags is so important when you're trying to promote companies. And, and I'm sure breweries have reached out to yourself or Roxy with the beer babes. You know, I've had people reach out to me and it's like, hey, you want to drink one of our beers, take a picture and, and describe it. And it's like, yeah, sure. No problem. It's, it's great. And it helps build traction for people who have would have never tried those breweries before. You're kind of like, hey, try these breweries. And here's why I liked it. Maybe here's why you'll like it. Yeah, exactly. Like give a description like, oh, if you like those styles, like maybe like that'll hit your fancy and like maybe you'll like those. And like, and when I enjoy a beer, I mostly share beers that I enjoy. Like sometimes I bought beers that I didn't really enjoy, but I didn't post them because I don't like, sometimes like your personal taste is like, it's your personal taste. You can't like go rip off a beer because like you didn't like it, but like a hundred other people love that beer. So, so that's why like, I always po- post like the beers that I love. Sometimes I post like your beers. I said, oh, there's something off, but like, I like that, like that, 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 but that was off. And just like, sometimes it's like constructive criticism. So sometimes like the brewery can work on something and like not feel attacked or bashed on because like you didn't like something of the beer. There's always a way to, 
present something and I always try to do it in a positive way because like being negative will never bring you anything it, ne- anything yeah. literally uh, and, and nowadays we need a lot more positivity a lot yeah, exactly. more positivity so yeah, yeah I, I mean it, you know um, if I have a bad beer I'll just I'll put it on on taps because that doesn't link to anything else that's just my own personal kind of beer tracker I don't yeah. recommend it to a friend I don't crap on it online it's a bad no, beer it's a bad good. beer it happens so uh and you know speaking with troy when we first started this show he said untapped actually helped him find a beer that was bad and so we called them all back because he's like oh something went wrong in the brewing process or the canning yeah, exactly. so that's on us thank you for letting us know so it is maybe sometimes negativity helps but as long as it's constructive criticism yeah, and exactly. brewers are able to take that then that's that's a good way to to do that that stuff is oops bottom of the can said september it should have been you know august (laughs) beer's bad sorry guys like it's that simple you know something happens like oxidation or anything like it's like like you said like beer is an art and a science and it's really complex like when i when i started brewing i thought it was like at first it was like oh easy peasy but like when it started like contamination oxidation and all that and you're get like mind blown and all the little things that could go wrong it's yeah. crazy just a little thing in the bottom of your bottle was not well rinsed or something that's oh, crazy and the cleaning behind brewing oh my god yeah <laughs> i mean you mentioned home brewing too do you, do you mind telling people how you homebrew is it kind of just in your kitchen do you do it in your garage like the home brewers we've spoken with like how how is your home brewing how is your home brewing when i started home brewing i would like brew on my stove with a like a, a big, uh, how do we say, shut the home? A um, pot. A big pot. Like, yeah. a, yeah. I think I did like four liters batch at first. It was only like, <laughs> like five, six beers, but they were really good. I was really impressed. Like my first beer was an, an IPA and it was freaking delicious. Now for, for first beer, I was like really surprised with myself. Well, me and my boyfriend, like we brewed that one together. We brewed a lot of beers together and he brewed some on his own side and I brewed some alone because like sometimes we don't have the time and like our work, our work schedules will not like coincide. And like, um, but now my, like my brewing system has evolved. I have a grandfather now, a G30. And that's pretty much it. I brought, I brew in my bathroom now though. Because like, <laughs> It goes, it goes really well. <laughs> like I, I put everything, like if there's supposed to be a mess or anything, it goes in my, in my tub and I have like my dryer in my washer where I put everything and I like sterilize everything and I put everything down. So it really works. And plus, like I said, I have kids, like they can't come and like touch everything <laughs> with their little dirty hands. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, children are walking cold and flu factories. So, oh my God. Uh, and you just want to touch everything. They're so curious. <laughs> like, like, especially when we were like bottling our beer, they would always come and I would have like a little pot with like a sanitizer and I would like dip their heads. Like, if you want to touch, you got to put your hand in there. <laughs> That's great. Like, uh, yeah. No, uh, uh, to me, it's the cleaning stuff. Like, I could personally never see myself homebrewing because I know. I would forget to sanitize something. I would do all that work um, and then it would go down the drain. So like you can never brew on a bad day. Cause like I have already like, I've scheduled like it was my day off and I was like, I wanted to brew that beer. Everything is ready. Like all my grains are weighted and everything. So like it's like to brew, but you're like kind of in a bad day. So like you forget something, then you have to wait two months. Then after that two months, your beer is infected. Oh, you're so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> no. That, uh, like it takes a lot of time. Like just brewing with a grandfather, it goes really quickly than with a pot. But it's still like two hours, two hours and a half. And like even like it could go up to four with your cleaning. Like before it used to take me like four hours, but like now I was more efficient, like with my cleaning and everything. But still, it's a lot of time, plus, like, the fermentation that is, like, a week, then you have to like, transfer it, then, like, ferment it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Plus the, the dry hoppings, like, you try to do, like, multiple dry hops, but every time you get, like, the risk of, in, of oxidation. So, so right now, yeah. I, like, I'm kind of putting brewing aside because it's, it's, like, it's taking a lot of space, and it, like, it takes a lot of time. So I haven't brewed. Like, if I, if I don't brew to, until May, It'll be almost a year I haven't brewed because I brewed so much. And the first time that I brewed like 10 beers in like a month, so I brewed a lot. So I, I still have a lot of beers. Yeah. In my room. Like, 
because I had like a the little big balls with the swing caps, mm -hmm. and I had like cases and cases of them like all piled up on my wall, and they're, most of them are all full. So, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, I, it's it's you know when you think about it, you brood yourself out. You kind of like I did too much, and I got to take a break. So, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking a break. It's not like you're gonna probably sell your grandfather anytime soon. If you want to get back to it at one oh. weekend, you will. So. I was actually thinking of maybe selling it, but like maybe keeping my, because I have like a lot of stuff and I invested a lot of my brewing, but like, I'm kind of like, I realized that I like more drinking beer than brewing beer because like mm -hmm. it was really cool and I really loved the knowledge that I gained of it, but like, I don't really feel like it anymore. So I haven't sold it yet, but I have told a couple of persons like that. I know that I owned the beer soon. I was like, oh, maybe I'm selling my grandfather. So if somebody would be interested, I would maybe sell them, sell it. Because I have everything, like from the bottles, from the fermenters, the the grain, the the yeast, and the hops. So if somebody would like want to brew, we can, you could buy my kit and brew like the same day. <laughs> uh, so yeah. that's an option. I mean, there's Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, uh, even yeah. the beer community on Instagram. I'm sure if you were to exactly. put it on, on as an Instagram photo. So yeah, well, I I'll. I haven't pushed it yet. Like if I really decide that I, I know I could sell it, but like I'm maybe looking to invest in a like in you know, a good camera, like take better pictures. Cause I always take my pictures with my cell phone. Like, yeah, it does like nice pictures, like with the editing and all, but it will never be like camera quality. But yeah. a nice camera is at least a thousand dollars. So I was like, oh, maybe to think of selling the grandfather to buy an, a, like a good camera. So well, I mean, even with cameras now, you, you know, with our show, we were, we're when we're at a brewery, we were three cameras set up. And at one point we were just a cell phone and uh, our video, my video for Phil, his camera that he used for weddings that also has his video. And he caught another version of his camera for a quarter of the price. So just shop around. You'll find what you need at some point. Everybody's selling stuff. You know, there's. Yeah, oh, exactly. It, you'll catch luck. It, when I buy stuff, I, I usually look for it on sale on Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji or yeah, anything like that first. So. Awesome. Uh, do you, now, I'm assuming you hang out with mostly a craft beer uh, type group, but if there's somebody new who enters the group, how do you go about recommending craft beer to those people? Well, it depends. Like, I'll ask them, like, do you like craft beer first? Like, do you know what craft beer? And if the person tells me, like, oh, no, I mostly drink, like, buds and, like, Mm -hmm. macro beer yeah i'll mostly go like for uh maybe like a lager because like they're mostly used to lagers and not used to ales or like something more soft at first like i'm not going to give them like a belgium saison first they're going to be like what the heck is that wow. like, <laughs> yeah exactly it's like somebody says like oh i like guinness and stuff they're like oh maybe like suggest them a dry stout because like guinness is it mm -hmm. i won't like go with that big old pastry style at first well maybe like they would like it but like it depends like what the the person tells me of their knowledge of beer first uh, now you do mention on your instagram you like to collab you're collab friendly have you collabed with a brewery when it comes to either yourself or with the brew babes community uh, i haven't collab well it depends what you mean by uh, collab like if like uh, public star as in uh, a way like they send you products and you do like a post for them yeah i have like a couple of brewery there's a uh, le boc le boc mm -hmm. there's echo that uh, contacted contacted me like uh, last week or the other week before and there is the trou okay. the one i okay they always send me their new their new beers like sometimes <laughs> I, just, I i come back from rogue there's a, yeah. from work there's a yeah. little box in front of my door i'm like hell yeah <laughs> yeah awesome have you uh have you noticed a change since Tout du Diable was purchased by uh, Labat InBev? Or does it still feel the same to you? For me, it still feels the same. But like in the Tout du Diable, I mostly got into them like a year and a half ago. Like okay. I used to like only, I like have the like straight line of like craft beers that I used to drink. But then I like started more exploring. And then I discovered them like a year and a half ago. And I went when they were bought. Uh, before the pandemic, about three, four years ago. Oh, okay, but, like then no, like no, yeah. I didn't see any difference. But I okay. really like their beer, and uh, mostly these times I I'm buying like their Siri uh, Carte Blanche. Mm -hmm. It's like a white card. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's their brewer that makes their beers. I have like almost all of them, and I feel uh, like they're really good. They're really like diverse, and like a beer that I really loved of them was uh, Sonance Conceive. 
it was like the hybrid between a, a brown ale and an mm. IP. It was really, really good. I really love that one. Well, this one too, honestly, is the first time I drank this one and mm -hmm. I was really surprised. Yeah. Like it's sweet, but not too sweet. It's like, I don't know, it's really well balanced. It's perfect. So uh, myself, I haven't noticed a difference. I have noticed they're more available across Canada because uh, Labatt gave them a distribution channel. I don't know if it's going to stay the same. I think they're still brewing out of it's Schwinnigan. No, that sounds wrong. I can't remember where the brewery <laughs> is. I, I know, know it's like near the Gaspé Z. Yeah, showing again. You oh, were okay. right. You I was right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so I think they're still their own facility, but Levac gave them a distribution channel, which I, I prefer hearing. Uh, then, hey, we're taking over. It's ours now. We, we're the multi-billion dollar brewery. So, awesome. Uh, would you like to collab by making a beer with a brewery? Oh, I would love to. Honestly, I would really, really love to. I was like, at first it was me and like the owner of the brewery, the Raliev, like talked of maybe brewing a beer together, but like it didn't happen because they, they had a lot going on at that time. But <laughs> honestly, if they would contact me like and say like, oh yeah, we want to brew a beer with you. I would absolutely love to brew a beer with a, a brewery. Cool. And so speaking of La Lièvre, uh, I always like to ask, what are some, I say, I visit your area of Quebec. What are like three to five, breweries brew pubs that were definitely heading to grab some beers well when you come to mont -Laurier, there's a like la lieve is obviously the place to go for craft beer for food their food is really good the craft beer is really good too uh unfortunately here in mont -Laurier, we don't have any other place well we have like the bistro but like they don't sell craft beer like the best beer they sell over there is uh, in saint count la bat okay <laughs> But the food is really great, though. But like, it's if you just want to go eat there and like have great food and great ambiance, it's a nice place. But it's not craft beer. Yeah. Um, another place that is not really far from uh, where I live is like uh, forty-five minutes because like here everything is far. Isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. Like all the villages are, are far. Uh, it's uh, La Belle Brou. Okay. La Belle Brou is a is a nice little brewery. Like they just opened, but like they have a really nice spot. There was. They're located where there was a, a kayak rental place oh, before. So cool. you're right next to the river. The terrace is like you see the nice river and the waterfall. So it's really nice. And the food is really good. And there would be Saint Arnoul, but Saint, like Saint Arnoul is like everybody knows them. Mm -hmm. And they're in Mont Tremblant. So that's like an hour and a half, no, an hour, an hour 15 from where I live. So it's kind of far to go like take a craft beer. So like my go to place is vraiment Lalia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, it, it does sound, I mean, you have, you know, you pretty much have an entire Instagram story bubble for that. Yeah. So obviously you yeah, really like really them. Cool. Yeah. Which oh, is great. Uh, awesome. It's really a nice brewery. Like the, the whole team is really nice. The owner is also really cool. He's the one that helped me out with a lot of my beers, my home brews. Like he gave me the first grain yeast and like hops to brew my first beer. The IP I told you about earlier, mm -hmm. he's the one that gave me the grains to brew it. Like he was like, oh, a gift, like have fun, brew a beer and like bring me a sample afterwards. And like with my beers, it, it, if like I have a question like a, about a certain grain or if I need a certain grain, like they're like, oh, come on, come and get it. And it's like, you're treated there like family. So for me, like the Laliev is really a special place for that. Like yeah. everybody there is like really, really nice. And the owner is really cool too. Yeah. No, I, lo I love hearing that about breweries, especially, you know, what's unfortunately some stories coming out about uh, some stories that should have been coming out years ago, but some stories that coming due to Aaron Broad, uh, Broadfoot out of Little Beasts uh, with all the uh, terrible things that happen to women at breweries. It's, it's kind of hard to hear these things as, oh, I used to love these guys. And now I can't because... Oh, they're not they're not a nice like place here. to go to so it's um and, and aaron having the brave noise uh collab that's that's awesome you know uh, oh yeah that's really cool what what i like is what i like what i love breweries doing is uh uh i'm confusing because there's celebrity beers which i call celebrities um like beers for a cause I, I love hearing that kind of stuff like the black is beautiful we had the uh ça va bien ali uh, beers here in Quebec or um, all together across uh, the rest of Canada and the US, I believe. And then uh, Brave Noise, it's like, we, we need more more things, you know, more social justice to come out for when it comes to beer. Yeah, so. Of course. Yeah, right on. Like, really, we need more of those beers, more movement, like more people talking about it. 
more, just more and more and more. One hundred percent agree. Uh, so I like to ask the question, obviously, when it's a lot safer to travel, if you were to get on a plane, not have to wear a mask for hours on end. Uh, I have no problem. Personally, I have no problem wearing a mask right now. Uh, but when it's completely 100 percent safe to travel, no more pandemic restrictions uh, to beer vacations uh, with or without the kids, because obviously maybe some I'm going to go out drinking, maybe not bring the kids to the bars with me uh, Two beer vacations. Yeah, that I like to ask. Uh, one where I have to go back to work. I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then two, I won the Lotto Max. I have $50 million. I could retire from work. What are those two beer occasions? Okay. Well, first one, well, example, like even on a, like I had to go back to work and like, I'm not a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I would still have like two locations. I would really like to go to Ireland. Ireland, because like drink like a fresh paint of Guinness, like Guinness, mm -hmm. the beer that's been really strong. Like even in, today, I still love, like, I still buy a four pack of Guinness like regularly. Like I would drink a fresh paint of Guinness over there and just try like the other beers because like obviously like it, there's not just Guinness over there. Yeah. And like a uh, more of a national uh, beer vacation, I would probably go to Toronto and like try a lot of uh, Ontario beer scene. But if I were to win the lottery, I would like, I would love to like organize a, example, a trip. It's like a around the world trip, but like only to go to top breweries. Okay. Not like those, uh, like this, there's some like you go on a boat and you're, you're gone for like 32 months and you yeah. like travel the world. But imagine that type of thing, but like for craft beer, like you're the owner of that. Like you're a millionaire, you build that and you become even richer. <laughs> See, oh. that's that's a first somebody who said, I'll take that money and I'll make even more money. But about craft beer, that's that's something that I find across Canada as well. We're slow. We're solely lagging is a craft beer bar where uh, let's say one downtown Montreal. I could get be I could just have uh, a flight of every single province across Canada oh, or like go so to, to Toronto, a beer from every single brewery across Canada. It's, you know. Oh, it's it's BC month at our brewery. So here's our four BC beers. And that's that's something that Canada as a whole we need is we need to support all of our provinces together. Now for, oh, for exactly. yeah, for myself and you, it's easy. Like Ontario is right there. Uh and the Maritimes is about five hours away, which is well, five hours for me. So about eight for you, but still you're almost closer to Manitoba than you are the Maritimes for me. So it's like yeah. Why can't we get those beers already in our, in our houses or in our stores? Or yeah. I'm, I'm still going to, I, you know, I'm a Montreal Quebecer. I'm going to buy the Quebec breweries first, but I'd really also like to support Nickelbrook out of Burlington or Superflux out of British Columbia, but I can't. And that's, that's something that, that I think we need across Canada is we, we should be sharing the beer. Yeah, exactly. Like, or like just here in Quebec, uh, a lacune that we have is the fact like we can't get our, like beers delivered to our door. Like everywhere in Canada, you can get like beers delivered to your door. You just have to be there and sign it, without, which yeah. I think is really nice. Like nobody can like steal your beers, but like, why can't I just get like, so every time I see the beers from Mesorium, like I barely never go to Montreal since I moved from there. Like I never go anymore. So I can never get the, I drank one of their beer. I was yeah. like, yeah. And like, why? I want some too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's me. I, I never, I'm sure it's for you too, because it's possible to find, but Oval, it's clearly, it's nearly impossible oh to get in Mon Montreal, let alone, yeah, I'm sure, Mount Mo like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. But it's the same. Like, I, I've tried some and, because I'm very lucky and I have some awesome friends. One of my friends, uh, his uh, mom has a motel in Gaspésie. She owns like a, a motel. So he goes there like once or twice a year. And every time he brings me back some Oval. But I'm very lucky because like the beer is like really like well conserved in the, in the glacier and everything mm -hmm. like it's perfect. It's like it came from there. But even though, like this year when he went, there was only two beers left. There was a Belgian Saison. I hate Saison when I <laughs> like now I hate Belgian beer. So when he brought me down, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> but it was still honestly, even for a style that I hate, I still enjoy that beer. I tell you how good they are. And then he brought me an IPA on. Oh, that one was, oh my God. It was so good. It was the Noma. Like I have them right here uh, on top of the <laughs> Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm lucky. I'm only a 40 minute walk from Masorum. So if I want to walk there, get drunk and come home, it's no problem. Uh, not get drunk, but just having two 8% IPAs, I shouldn't be driving anytime soon. So 
Uh, that's no, where but I'm. It's cool. like, you get to walk. Like maybe if like before when I was younger, I used to live like downtown Montreal. So I would like walk to the bistro or walk to well maybe not the microbrasserie because it was far from it, mm. but still I could like walk and I would never take a taxi and even if I would go out with my friends, I would like never take my car. Never, never. Yeah. But. Like now, I live like 15 minutes away from one of these, so I have to take my car just to go to work. So, yeah, like, no, I would never, never know. No, it's it's nice. Um, I, I don't know how, how your area, Montreal, and, and well, even Montreal, an hour and a half away, it's I, I don't know how things are expanding out there like they are here in Montreal. It's, I mean, you know, we're the major city in, in Quebec, we're the biggest city here in Quebec. So, it's like, oh, there's another microbrewery, there's another microbrewery. You know, you mentioned Misorum. Now there's Mutsoid. Now there's Melon. Now there's this. Now there's that. So I'm yeah. I'm thankfully lucky enough to catch that. You did mention you're not that far from Gatineau. Is that right? No. Well, I'm like two hours away. Well, oh. it's about the same distance. But well, not far for me. It's not far because yeah. like I'm used to like yeah. driving. But like from uh, like Montreal is two hours and a half. Yeah. Or like three, depending how you drive or if there's traffic. And get snow is like two hours. But two hours of a uh, like your little roads like in the woods so I, honestly i prefer driving to get snow than driving to montreal yeah it's nicer so. too I, I think it's nicer too in gatineau and you're right across the bridge you have ottawa if you want so yeah, exactly. it's so uh, i always go around yeah yeah no i i've I, I know i sound like a broken record i say it all the time for where we are in in north america from sol Saint marie almost Thunder Bay, let's say, to the Maritimes and surround kind of the, the United States at the same time, we're very spoiled for very good beer. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we're, like, in the perfect place to, like, get beer, even through, like, beer trades and, like, have, like, a, a good, like, delay of getting those beer shipped. So, like, it takes, like, less than a week. So, like, your beer is not really damaged and, like, depending on what time of the year, like, I wouldn't ship in, like, mid-July. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what yeah. I'm getting. Yeah, no, I've I've shipped beer to uh, the United States. I speak I've spoken with uh, uh, the the Luther, so the wrestlers in the U.S. who are beer drinkers. So I sent them a beer from Arras Le Buc because they had a, a pro wrestler on their can, and they're like, "The beers were perfect. Why did it say maple syrup?" I'm like, "Because you're not allowed shipping beer." <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I always ship yeast. <laughs> yeah, maple syrup. So that's that's awesome. Uh, so. Uh, as a as the brew mail brand or even your personal instagram what's what's next for you well like for brew mail uh soon i'm hitting a 3k um uh, followers I, i'm sorry i, I had an uh, abonnee on that, don't worry about it so that's really cool um i may be thinking of doing a giveaway with a brewery that i really love uh like in a collab like mm -hmm. i would like give me the beers and i would like give them away at a as a thank you, like all the support and love I have for my followers. So I'm really grateful for that because like, honestly, I would never thought, at first I was like, oh, I have like 200 <laughs> followers, cool. And now I'm like, I'm 3K, I'm like, oh my God, like yeah. what? So like for that, I'm very happy and grateful. So I want to do a giveaway. So that's what's coming up next. With GDML, well, GDML is a, uh, well, that's another thing, like I, started slacking spending money on beer and like i'm putting more and more money on my car so there's mm -hmm. a like i really love my forester and like he's a he's really unique and i want to make it even more unique so that's what's coming up for him him <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was like an entity <laughs> yeah but like uh, yeah so like on gdm mill it's like more car parts i like I ordered some this week and from Brewmel, it's maybe a giveaway coming up soon. So like kind of two things coming up soon. So that's cool. And but like, oh my God, <laughs> um, sp like spending on cars. It's like, it's, it's crazy how much it costs. Like just for like, I bought, I bought a front grill when it was $360 just for this front grill for my car. Cause it's 19 years old. So like they don't make them new. You have to buy no. them used on eBay. <laughs> yeah, no, I I just uh, my last car just died, so I just got a brand new 2022. Which oh my God. car shopping alone, one place told me October of 2022 when I was car shopping in November, which my brain it made no sense in my brain like, that what? it should take 11 months to get a car. But there's a lot of car problems right now, so I think it's yeah. almost better that you still have an older car running. Than yeah. 
having uh before this car my other car was 2009 so you know it it went a while but it's yeah having car payments again sucks <laughs> i gotta say yeah, so. well, i'm not free of car payments that's my like my forester is like my project my baby but i still have like a daily it's okay. a, a 2016 tucson and I was very lucky because I bought it just before the pandemic hit. Like I, I bought it in December and in January, no, in March of 2020, the pandemic hit. Yeah. So like then the car, the, the like the car prices went so up and I, like for the Tucson, for the low mileage and everything like I had on it, I would have paid like twice what I just paid. So I was like really, really lucky, yeah. but damn, I should have bought a house. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, uh, oh my yeah. God. I was supposed to buy, buy a house. Like me and my husband were looking to buy a house like for like, just we're, like we were there. We had the money and like everything was just like, we're going to buy a house. And now like the immobilier went so high. Yep. It's, it's ridiculous. Like you'll pay like 250K for a house that's worth 150. And in five years, your house is going to go back to 150. And if you want to sell it, you're just, you're just going to lose so much money. So for now, we're just staying in our apartment because like we're really lucky. Our rent is really low. It's nice. Our our landlord is really cool. So like we're staying here for a while. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. My, my landlord's pretty awesome right now. So I can't really complain uh, at this time. I personally is the same. I'd love to own a house. But yeah, as a, a single uh, white male who works from home right now because of the pandemic, uh, I don't have $400,000 for a condo. So it's, God, no. God, it's no. especially I don't I I love Montreal so much I don't want to leave it so that's also doesn't help is I'm living in the most expensive part of Quebec so yeah oh no <laughs> I remember like when I used to live in Montreal I would like I lived in the, like a, a nice place in La Salle I don't know if you know mm-hmm. well it's right right next to La Chine. And like I had like a nice apartment, but it was uh, our Dury and me, uh, two and a half. Yep. And I used to pay with the parking for the car. And we only had one car at that time. We didn't have two. It was $20, $20 per month. So I paid, uh, no, 25, sorry. It was 625 per month just for a little two and a half. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Like here I, like here I pay like 525 for a big four and a half like imagine like the, the yeah. price point it's crazy no yeah um, it's um it's wild uh unfortunately right now but who knows you know every day something new is coming along every day there's some new stuff being discovered money's changing as long as oh, craft exactly. beer still stays delicious and keep advancing when it comes to taste and inclusivity that's all that i care about so yeah me too like honestly like houses and money it's something that comes and goes but like craft beer when like it's a passion you really want to stay like kind of like it's okay to evolve but like still keep like the same route just like evolve a little bit but not too much yeah <laughs> like you like, sort of the meme where they like they post they put like doritos in a beer like how much oh, i was like oh my god what are you guys doing like it was somebody high like what? yeah uh part of my brain's oh. like oh that's gross and the other part of my brain's like i'd like to try it i'm like what yeah (laughs) yeah exactly awesome uh i have no other questions it's been a fantastic talk i really appreciate you speaking with us today about your instagram and obviously your clear uh passion for craft beer as well uh so for those who want to follow you uh where can my audience find you Uh, on instagram also on facebook but on Facebook, like the following is really, uh, it's mostly like my friends, family that follow me on Facebook. But I'm, like, I'm really happy. Like all my friends and family support me. And like on Instagram, that's where like mostly it's international mostly. And it's at oh, yeah. Brumel 2 ls right? Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to add all the links in the show notes. If you'd like to follow uh, either Brumel's Strictly Instagram or her JDML, where it's more about cars as well. Both will be in the show notes. As for us, allbeerinside.com is the website. The website has been revamped. Uh, We have separated our unfiltered show from our more family-friendly show like this. Uh, As well, if you want to, it's at allbeerinside on all social media. I can be followed with at Killer Carpetium. And as I say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap.